Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Three and you here for another Legacy video. Um, we're going to be playing some Pox today. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of a message that I got. Um, the short version of this is that a bunch of the people from the, the Pox Discord server, um, Isaiah Nene 666 d aggressive b decided to give a little gift to one of the other Pox Discord admins, who, quote, Farted out a baby. All right, end quote. Um, so, you know, you have a baby, and as is customary, you get that baby a league with pox. You have to get them started young if you want to be them good. <laughs> I'm sorry, this whole situation is just very funny. Phil Gallagher, Thraven you. we're playing a wild pox gack league. Like, the, the name here is, like, Pox, P-O-X, but we have Gak in the middle, so it's, like, Pogax, Pox Gak. Okay. Uh, we've, we've got silly energy starting off today. Uh, so, generally speaking, we have shoved a couple of decks together in sort of an interesting way. We have the traditional Gravecrawler, Bloodgast, Recursion shenanigans that you might expect from a mono-black deck built heavily around graveyard synergies. But we also have smallpox and bone shards as a way to get additional value out of sacrificing our creatures. Now, some of this stuff works in kind of strange ways, right? Where it's like either synergistic or not quite synergistic, depending on what the board looks like. So sometimes you can do something like cast a smallpox and you'll have a bridge from, the bridge from below in the graveyard. And you can go and actually net creatures out of casting a smallpox, which is pretty interesting. And along the smallpox line, we also have a dredge land, right? So we have Darkmoor Salvage, so that we can go and, like, get rid of a land via smallpox and then guarantee that we can get one back, which is sort of a neat synergy here. Um, hmm. Made some changes to the deck list that I think I'm going to have to undo. I was told to split the fetch lands, and then I realized that we have a Dryad Arbor, so I really do need a full playset of Verdant Catacombs. All right, I'll make that change before I actually get started playing with the League. Um, okay, so kind of our big payoff here is going to be Hogak. Uh, you know, banned in a couple of formats, like very strong magic card. We're hoping to use cards like Stitcher Supplier to work towards that relatively quickly. As far as the sideboard goes, most of it's pretty straightforward. Feed the Swarm is one you might not be familiar with. It destroys a creature or enchantment, so it's got some flexibility, but there is a life penalty associated with that. Um, but this is something that you can use to answer like a range of things. You know, this can kill a Merktide or it can kill a Rest in Peace, depending on what you need it to do. And then we just have some assorted graveyard hate in the form of Douthy Voidwalker and Surgical Extraction. Um, if you enjoy this deck, a couple of weeks ago I did play another mono black deck sort of on a, in a similar fashion um, that was trying to use Champion of the Perished, so feel free to check out that video as well. Anyway, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to support the channel if you like what you're seeing, and if you're a regular, throw me a like before the video begins. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. If you're really enjoying my content uh, and you want to do something to financially support the channel, consider becoming a YouTube member to gain access to some early release videos and exclusive videos, as well as my Discord server, or doing a donation deck list yourself and getting something cool on the channel. All right, let's battle. There's that Dryad Arbor. Okay, how is this hand? Do I go Land Stitcher Supplier on turn one, or Carrion Feeder? on turn one into a Stitcher Supplier, sacrifice it on turn two. The Putrid Imp can do cute things with Bridge from below. I really need another land here. That's pretty good if I get another land. I'm not counting Dryad Arbor as a land. That's Lightning Bolt fodder, as far as I'm concerned right now. How many lands does this deck run? I guess that's important in this metric. I have 19 lands. No, I don't want... Microsoft fucking Edge. I wish I could take this off my bar, but it keeps coming back after updates. Um, maybe this one's too clunky. I'll mulligan it and try to find something a little more stable. Eh, alright. This is an underpowered hand. 
Um, all right. I think the first hand was better than this, but I'm not going to go to five fishing. Okay, opponent just skipped their turn. And my opponent has conceded. Yeah. Yeah, they heard somebody farted out a baby, and uh, they're just not on board for this. Yeah. I think that's the fastest I've ever run won a round. That was 11 seconds on my end, including mulligan decisions. Good stuff. All right, round two, kind of round one. I'm going to keep my hand here. Um, so if I cast smallpox and discard a bridge from below, I, I actually get a token, right? Um, order is discard a card, sack a creature, sack a land. Yeah, I think I'm going to get a deuter from that. That's cool. Opponent went to five, though, which is scary for me. Ooh. Eh, okay. So we're playing against some sort of Dark Depths deck. Uh, the small pox effect should be pretty good. It's not targeted land destruction, though. Alright, I did not hit there on something that would just let me go ham. Who don't hex mate? Well, actually, it's like fine, right? I just cast a small pox. Yeah, I think I just cast a small pox and everything's fine. Um, that's kind of wild. Um, I'm just going to quickly think and see if there is a putrid imp line that is better. I don't think so. All right. So let's go land small pox. This is wild. All right. So we lose a life. Actually, do I want to discard the bridge? I just discard it next turn via putrid imp. Instead, because my opponent's going to have a creature die. Yeah, maybe I just, just discard Hogak here. You know, getting that zombie now is probably good. Alright, so I sacrifice this. Alright. Okay, so this is the one from the opponent's graveyard. So then I just want to stack it this way so I get my zombie. Then I can do the Stitcher Supplier thing, and then that bridge can go. So I have a Grave Crawler in Graveyard that I can cast, and then I can do the Hogak thing next turn. Nice. I mean, we'll we'll see if my opponent can just... Oh. Oh, that was rude. Did not, uh... Did not enjoy that. Alright, so I can go... Future Dimp. Discard a Bloodgast. Play a Dryad Arbor. Return a Bloodcast. I can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 towards Hogak, so I'm not there yet. I'll just send in for 2 damage and call that good. Jeez, that Bojuka bug was kind of savage. Like, I knew that was a possibility in my opponent's deck. I just, like, was not actively just expecting that to naturally be in their hand. I wouldn't have felt bad about it if uh, it was, like, a drop rotation for it. Ugh. Okay, all I need to do is rip a black source, and then I can just, like, smallpox and answer that. Come on, black source. Altar of Dementia. So I'm gonna have to block with a putrid imp. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this in play. Do I start doing this yet? Yeah, I guess there's some weird worlds where I can just get a Hogak this turn if everything kind of goes perfectly. Ball therapy. I don't think I want to do that right now. Yeah, I think I'll I think I'll just chill here. I do have to discard a card so this thing gets flying. So I will discard my Hogak. Go to blockers, block here. Then Sacrifice, target me, junk, putrid imp. All right, there's a small box. I need a land. Come on. That crocus is good against what I got going on here. Yes! Okay. So that's land, return, bloodgast. Yes. I think I will go ahead and sacrifice, target myself, junk, a bloodgast. Oh, now there's multiple blood gas in there. We're cooking with gasoline, folks. All right. So let's return both blood gas. Yes. 
Yes. Um, I'm going to not alter first. Yeah, I think I won't alter first. So let's just go smallpox, sacrifice a bloodgast. Ooh, opponent discarded a knot of this world. Um, that's spicy. Oh, I need to sacrifice a land. Sacrifice a swamp. They're left in this weird position where, like, they probably have to keep the Bojuka Bog for their colors, but, like, they need Caracas for this Hogak that's in my graveyard. That's a tough one. Okay, they've gotten rid of the Caracas, so I'm going to tap one, two, Junk Wasteland, Putrimp, yeah, yeah, yeah. Return a Hogak. Um... I'm just going to leave this thing in play and hit my opponent with it very hard. All right, they're at 15. This is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I won't have lethal if a land blood gas doesn't have haste yet. Um, this is shenanigans, though. Yeah. What a strange game. <laughs> okay. Um, all, of, all of this is in one pile in a way that I don't like. Okay. I think I like the discard. I have I have like options for things that I can do. Like for example, a dark blast can deal with a dark confidant if that's something that's in my opponent's deck. Um I think I want the thought seizes. I'm not sure anything beyond that. Like Dalthy Voidwalker is kind of interesting to keep my opponent's creatures from dying and getting rid of my bridges. Surgical is kind of interesting to just like totally rip an effect out of the deck. Um, I think if I get a handful of Thought Seizes in there, I'll probably call that good. Like Thought Seize plus Therapy is a pretty good set of disruption um, to get me out of the first couple of turns. Probably going to go down like, yeah, opponent was like very confused about what land to do. Yeah. I think that was a tough spot. Like, in case they watch this video later, because, like, they are a fan of the channel. If they keep the Caracas, then I can just, like, play Gak, sacrifice it to my altar, and then, like, use that to really pump my graveyard, get multiple bridges, and try to go wide that way instead of going tall via one threat. And if they just keep Caracas, they can't really cast any, like, real card in their deck, right? Like, maybe some Pithing Needles, that's about it. Yeah, maybe I go down an altar, go down a Hogak, go down a bridge, go down a Bone Shards. Uh, maybe I need to keep Bone Shards for, like, Reclaimer. Uh, go down, like, one Putrid Imp? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I don't, I don't think there's anything in my deck I really want to cut. I think this is more of just a, like, trim around the edges situation. It's Dryad Arbor. You're a party. Um, I'm going to keep this hand. Like, this is another hand that just lets me small. Fuck. Okay. That occurred. Uh, anyway, it's something that just lets me small box on turn two for value. Um, less less so on the value now. Um, so there is, like, uh, what? Feed the swarm in the sideboard? That can answer that? That's a, that's a thing. Small box isn't here anymore. Um, meaning that my hand got just, like, significantly worse. Like, I have below average sized creatures, and I can't take this ley line out of play. My opponent is going to attempt to make a 20-20 that kills me. Actually, I shouldn't have shaved a Putrid Imp, since that can block Merit Lodge. That was objectively a mistake. I think I'm going to have to bring these Feed the Swarms in and then, like, figure out what I'm doing in regards to, like, discard spells. Okay. I mean, I almost certainly still just do that, right? Like, it's a land destruction spell at the end of the day. I'll accept that this isn't nearly as good for me as normal. All right, so I don't need this altar if I can't do graveyard-based shenanigans. And then I'll sacrifice one of these. Ooh, I got a Hex Mage out of my opponent's hand. 
And I'm not sure which one of these I'm going to get. Like, that's a very contextual decision based on what is in my opponent's hand. All right, they're keeping the Dark Depths. Like, they can just go Urborg Hex Mage, and, like, that would be real bad for me. Ooh, but they don't. Okay, cool. So I will play out a Bloodgast and hope that Bloodgast plus Dryad Arbor can get there before my opponent just draws out of their bad mana situation. Okay, they found mana. Aha! You fool. My deck has no good cards to take. That's my secret. Okay, just another blood guest. Sure. I can be loose with my sequencing here because I'm not really uh, expecting any, like, contagion level card from my opponent here. I probably have my opponent on a three-turn clock, um, but, you know, I can die pretty quickly here. Crash in for five. Opponent's at 11. I play a zombie idiot. And uh, I hope to avo avoid the sweet embrace of death. Okay. Uh, this is the point where a vampire hex mage could come in. Yep. I guess I should fetch to thin, right? Yeah, I guess I should fetch to thin here. Because I have outs. Like, I can draw another small pox. Will I? Will I draw another smallpox? <laughs> well, you either have it or you don't. I, I agree. Those are those are the two scenarios here. Um, I do not have it. Uh, so I am dead to this, but I am going to mill my opponent for a handful of cards here and just kind of take a look and see what is in their graveyard, or rather in their deck, see if there's anything... Um, particularly noteworthy here. I'm not really expecting to see anything. Luster Storm. Okay, that's good to know about. Okay. And Spirit Guides. Yep, okay. Yep, all right. So now that I know about Leyline, I'm more keen on Fiend the Swarm than I was a second ago. I also want to keep this Putrid Imp. If Feed the Swarm is coming in, can Bone Shards go out? Probably on the play. That makes it so I would only need to cut one other card if I want to keep all the Thought Seizes. Which I think I do when I'm on the play. Could just go down like the Altar of Dementias. I think a lot of times I'm just good with hitting my opponent with my creatures. Could bring a bridge back in on the play. Or another Hogak. Let's bring in another bridge. I don't know. Like it, It's weird, right? Because if my opponent goes and mulligans to Leyline... Then some of the stuff just gets worse. Um, this is a weird hand. This is a hand that's very good against Leyline. I think I'm just going to keep this and see if my opponent mulligans into Oblivion looking for a Leyline. I'm just going to Cabal Therapy naming Vampire Hex Mage on turn one. One mulligan already. And they started with Leyline, so I have Feed the Swarm to answer that. Cool. So, land, therapy, target you... Vampire Hex Mage. It. All right. Now, the awkward thing here is that my opponent's thought sees is going to take my feed the swarm, making this hand considerably worse than it otherwise would have been. Yeah, that's a little tough. I can wasteland and completely knock my opponent off of colored mana. Oh wow. I took my smallpox. What is the pace of this game? I think it is such that I am supposed to take my opponent off of colored mana here and play this creature. Like, I can try to, like, strip this crop rotation via a discard spell and then keep the wasteland around forever. Eh. Not work out the way I wanted. Uh, Bloodgast. Sure. Fetch. Play this out, attack for one, and hope that I can do some nonsense after removing that ley line of the void before my opponent gets enough lands to stage in depths. They'll need four lands. They have the stage already, they'll need two more lands. I don't know how many they have currently. All right, they found an Urborg. That's actually catastrophic. Like, that's probably their best draw. 
because that means that they can crop rotation the gemstone mine away, turning it into a Dark Depths, and create their thingy next turn. Yikes. Alright, not a lot to be done there. I'm going to need to, like, draw a small pox. Alright. So now I can crash in for 3 damage. I want to go to 13, so then I can sacrifice the blood ghast for a counter, play this land, and return my blood ghast. I think, I think, I think because my opponent very, oh, um, well, I guess it doesn't matter, right? They can wait on it. The crop rotation kind of like is just free in terms of mana. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I am just dead. I'll pretend not to be. I don't think it does me any good, right? I just, like, do this thing a couple of times. Uh, once more. Sacrifice this. Play this. Yes. Oh, now I've, like, shown my opponent that I'm hellbent. I'm gonna make a very large carry and feeder and concede. Actually, I mean, I guess there's a world where my opponent, like, technically misses the whole crop rotation thing, right? Like, that's a world that technically exists. Yes. Carrion Feeder. Sacrifice Gravecrawler. Gravecrawler to play. Yeah, I would have killed next turn. Alright, there's my attempt at doing a bunch of damage. My opponent will crop rotation do their thing. Yep. Show me the Dark Depths. Yep. Show me that you remember which one to click on to keep your creature. I'm guessing they will. They have figured it out. I accordingly will concede. Uh, we are just short of taking that one. GG's. Okay, is this enough mana for what I need to do? Like, I have cool things, but I'm not sure that this hand just gets there on a single mana source. Like, the Carrion Feeder Gravecrawler loop is way weaker without more mana to be able to dump into. I think I'm just going to mulligan this hand. This is an unimpressive hand. Do I keep it? I probably just keep it rather than go down further than this. I'll just pitch one of my lands here. Um, yeah, I mean, this is probably on par with the power level of the first hand. This can become better quickly, or, like, I can wasteland my opponent and take them off of a critical first land. Okay. Um, this isn't the worst. I go ahead and attack in with Gravecrawler. And then I think I'm going to try to deny my opponent some resources here. I think I'm going to wasteland and make it so that this spell is not dazable. Actually, do I want to do this with Discard the Bloodgast? Maybe I want to do this with Discard of Bloodgast instead. Yeah, let's let's do that. I don't want this thing to fill the graveyard and then just make it like that much easier for the Merktide Regent type cards to be able to come in. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I got I got a Merktide Regent in that deal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Wow, still on Steam Vents post Ragaman banning? Okay. I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm just surprised. Like, Ragavan specifically was the reason why Steam Vents was good, because you wanted to have more than four cards that could play the Dragon Rage Channeler and Merktide Regents on turn one specifically. Alright, so, land, which returns a Bloodgast. Carrion Feeder. Nice, so Carrion Feeder... You'll sacrifice a blood ghast. I'll go ahead and fetch. Get a swamp. Return a blood ghast. Back for two in combat. When it goes to 13. At which point I'll sacrifice a grave crawler. Recast it and probably just call it a turn there. I can just like leave all this stuff on board. Like I've got stuff that I can sacrifice to uh Get this thing out of lightning bolt range if needed. Uh, that's fine. I think I'm going to be clocking harder than my opponent is. Ooh, an altar. I don't actually think I use my mana for that right now. So let's sacrifice a blood ghast. Play a land. Yes. Sacrifice a blood ghast. Fetch. 
Land, Bloodgast. Yes. Probably just sacrifice Gravecrawler more times here. Sacrifice you. Play you. Sacrifice. Repeat this sexy little dance. And hope my opponent doesn't have some weird bounce spell that really pays them off. Um, or me dedicating so much mana to this. Um, do I need to hit for more than this here? Like, does putting them too lower do anything? Probably not. I I think that's acceptable. Okay. So, like, this is the point where these Dragon Rage channelers can potentially, like allow them to very easily throw, like, a Murktide or something into play. I die in two turns, so, like, I do have to kill my opponent. These things have to attack unless my opponent can shrink their graveyard with something like a Murktide um, to make it so that those can then block. And it seems like they can. Yep. Yeah, so now those get to be held back, which is not great for me. All right. So, if my opponent can fill their graveyard, they do kill me. So, I guess we try for shenanigans? Attempt to do alter shenanigans. Alright. Target me with this one. Junk of Bloodgast. I found a Hogak. Hot damn. Um, let's sacrifice this. Oh, I wanted to do that via Altar of Dementia. Oops. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think this was deterministic yet, but it was going to be very good for me. That feels like an early concession. I'm obviously very happy with it. Dark Blast is weird. Dark Blast is very good early and very bad late. I will probably play Feed the Swarm as something that can just get a Murktide Regent out of the way. Galthy Voidwalker is also, like, not insane. Like, it it keeps Murktide from becoming a problem. Do I smallpox, I think, is the big question here. So, like, the smallpox can be very good against some of my opponent's starts, but it's kind of rough on the draw. It's kind of bad versus days. I'm kind of inclined to just take these out of the deck. Uh, if my opponent's going to concede to Altar of Dementia that quickly, I also should just, like, keep Altar of Dementia in my deck. So as of right now, this is what I'm doing. It's just a question of, like, can I squeeze this other Douthy Voidwalker in there somehow? Get rid of, like, one Putrid Imp or one Hogak, I think. I think I'll get rid of one Putrid Imp and just have, like, one more card that is, like, a must-deal-with sort of... Well, maybe maybe it's not quite must-deal-with, but it's it's annoying. Um, I am Mana Light here, um, which I think has been the theme of most of my hands so far. Uh, just, like, throwing that out there. Uh, I'm going to keep this and pitch this Altar of Dementia. I think this hand can become pretty good in a lot of circumstances. Um, uh, Putrid Imp specifically right now would be pretty insane. Sure, sure, sure. Gravecrawler. Carrion Feeder or Gravecrawler, my turn one. Probably just a Gravecrawler, honestly. I don't really want the carrion feeder to get answered. My opponent has to use removal spells on crap like grave crawlers. That benefits me a lot. Uh, a lot of my stuff can't block though, so like that's a thing. This altar is a weird draw because it's like pretty good, but a little sketch in some ways. I'm gonna go land carrion feeder. All right, it just worked. Go ahead and fetch. And I think I will just play another Gravecrawler rather than recast this one. I can avoid a, an awkward surgical extraction situation somewhere along the lines. I would like to do so. All right. So these, these Dragon Rage channelers are going to go to the moon quickly. Bane Lightning, Carrion Feeder, that's fine. Dragon Rage channeler bins Force of Will. And keeps whatever the other thing is on top. I do not have the red mana to redirect that. Yep. Your your attacks are safe. Ooh. Do I just do that? Or do I just play a bloodgast? 
could just play the altar this turn, but like it's bad against days. I think I just play this. Um, it can make some lines that are absolutely insane occur. A cabal therapy. Don't mind if I do. Cabal therapy target you. I'm gonna sacrifice the stitcher supplier and just try to go ham this turn. Did not succeed in finding a hogak. All right, what am I afraid of from my opponent? I'm not afraid of counter magic. I'm not super afraid of a surgical. I'm just going to name a Merktide. It's something that, like, very reasonably could be stuck in my opponent's hand. Double Lightning Bolt. Okay. That is legitimately scary. I'll crash in for four. I think my opponent is rather favored here. I think they just, like... Lightning Bolt me, turn on both of these Dragon Rage channelers, and uh, end up in a little bit of a questionable spot. Yeah, Douthy Voidwalker not at its best here. I'm going to take six and be dead next turn to these things. Um, if I have an out, it involves this Altar of Dementia doing absolutely insane things but I think it's very hard to do those insane things with my opponent having a surgical. Um, that's multiple grave crawlers. So I'm going to fetch, and then my opponent is going to surgical my grave crawlers. All right. Um, let's keep going then. Okay. That's, that's not going to do it. All right. Uh, so we're going to have to concede here. And we'll try a game where we're on the play. So now I know that Brazen Borrower is a thing that is in their list. I know about Surgical Extraction. I, I think the Dark Blast window is just so small that it's not going to be good for me to try and, like, thread that needle. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to thread that needle. Um, turn one, Putrid Imp. Discard this land and dredge. Um, I think I'm going to keep this hand. I don't really think it's anything super special, but wastelanding my opponent and returning a blood ghast is like a thing, right? This isn't like the, the Stitcher supplier hand where like everything just feels like Black Lotus, but uh hopefully this does something. Events, sure. Lightning bolt. Alright. So I'm going to discard Blood Ghast. Do I discard Darkmore Salvage so that I can dredge? I don't think I do. Um, it's 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 awkward that I have like, what is that on? On Bloodgast. Awkward. Kind of a uh, surgical straight up traded for a card that I discarded there, so that was very good value from my opponent. Um, hopefully this wasteland does a lot of damage to my opponent. Otherwise, I don't think I come back from this. Ditcher supplier. Um. Let's not get dazed. Let's wasteland this and play a Stitcher Supplier out afterwards. Um, uh, do I want a Cabal Therapy? I don't think I do. Like, without another zombie in play, I'm not going towards um, recurring grave crawlers yet. Fuck. Alright. Uh, don't know that I can really beat that like i have to kind of pull some shenanigans of some kind here like these these two cards that i have in play are not particularly strong um like i can hit this delver out of play crash in for two that's not really where i want to be my opponent doesn't have red mana currently but like they're a cantrip deck so they'll find it um, I would love to draw a Hogak, and I very specifically do mean draw a Hogak. I'll bash in for my two. Like, if I draw a Hogak, I can play that around, like, days and stuff, and then just kill my opponent with that. Oh, my opponent Brainstorm locked themselves. That's a boon. Yeah, all right, I'll... Since the Blood Ghasts are gone, I think I can pretty safely just keep playing these land drops to make Soft Permission continuously worse against me. Oh, wow, we are uh, we are lucking out here. I 
do not believe we might get over the finish line with a pair of two twos here because this means my opponent has like no lands plus no cantrips all right um if they brainstorm lock themselves again they probably die right uh, that, that just guarantees four damage on my end oh my god wow okay so i play this you have a force you have a force now i can't replay this from graveyard as you can see um but this situation's not uh all that bad for me his opponent is uh presumably redrawing things that they've already seen surgical extraction targeting their own steam vents okay so uh they're purely doing that to shuffle so that they can get fresh looks at cards the thing is that any fetch land kills them right we have gotten the lol, and we win the match. Ha uh ha. -huh. What a weird one, folks. What an absolutely wild and strange game that was. Hey, if you made it this far in the video, it's pretty obvious that you're enjoying my content. Consider doing something to help me, whether it's something as small as leaving a like or subscribing to my channel, or doing something cool like doing a donation deck list, or even cooler, a dealer's choice donation deck list, just saying, I get to do shenanigans every time that happens. Okay, back to the show. This hand almost does a lot of things. Accordingly, I think I keep it? Like, I, ca I can play a kind of controlling game versus creatures? Oh no. Okay. We ley line deck. I think we're a ley line deck. Oh, we're a surgical deck. Okay. So, Archon of Cruelty help me? Huh. So my plan is to smallpox this. Just like discard a bridge from below here. Yeah. Yeah. This is not so bad, right? No, I don't even have to smallpox this, right? I can just grave crawler this instead. Or no, I can just Bone Shards it. Is it better to Cabal Therapy this turn? Yeah, let's do this. So let's just go land, Grave Crawler. When that Archon attacks, I get a Zombie. And then I can use the Zombie to Bone Shards, or I can Smallpox. The thing I'm hoping for is that my opponent can't produce a second creature, at which case, like, Bone Shards and Smallpox aren't really going to cut it. Uh, okay, no second creature in there. That's good. Um, Reanimator feels a little tricky. I'll sacrifice this. I'll just like junk a therapy, I guess. And I'll get my creature. Take six and go to eight. And use bone shards to deal with this. I guess things get weird if my opponent like reanimates a grave crawler, right? Grief. Um, yeah, that's annoying, because that gets rid of my bridge, and then I lose bone shards. Well, I might lose smallpox. It depends on what opponent has. If my opponent has another re reanimation spell that they can play this turn. I think I just lose. Okay, cool. So, play Wasteland. Wasteland, one of these. They randomly jumped around in a way that was weird. I guess this is sorcery speed. Maybe I should have done this first. Like, I'm not really expecting a lightning bolt out of my opponent or anything, but, you know. All right, so there's my two damage. And now, cast it with sacrifice a creature, I think. Do this, do this. Junk the zombie. Get rid of that creature, and we'll see if my opponent either has a reanimate or a land plus a two drop uh, reanimation spell. Don't think I'm really getting out of this if they do. Um, like Zoom do anything for me? I sacrifice a grave crawler. Thing just attacks and kills me. I don't really know what my out is here. Um, future Dimp is not yet. I can play Future Dimp, recycle a creature. Uh, yeah, that's that's no good for me. How many Surgicals do I have? All right, I have three Surgicals, and Feed the Swarm and Douthy Voidwalker and Thoughtseize are also playable as well. Okay. Where where do I cut the metaphorical crap, so to speak? 100% of the time, these are in, and then these seven cards are maybes. Ogax awkward because my opponent can reanimate it and it's a very, very, very real threat. 
I don't think I want Altar of Dementia. Smallpox is so weird versus my opponent because it can be an out to their creatures, but it can also enable them to put their creatures into the bin in the first place. I don't know how I feel about it. Probably not good. Probably not good. I think I want to. I think I want to try to punch a hole and surgical something, or punch a hole and play a Douthy Voidwalker. I think a lot of my lines involving some of this other stuff are not going to be great. I don't know. I don't know about Feed the Swarm. Like, I've already boarded in so many cards. I don't know how much deeper I can go and still have enough synergy to, like, do my thing. I think I'll play Feed the Swarm on the draw, but not on the play. All right. Um, This is a perfectly reasonable hand that I will keep. I have to decide how I am going to play it out, though. So, like, I always play Swamp. Do I play Thoughtseize? I probably just play Thoughtseize and try to punch a hole. Holy hell. So Entomb is currently the thing that's not really replaceable here. My opponent has multiple reanimation spells. Yeah, they don't have discard currently. Yeah. I'm going to take this Entomb, try to keep them off balance for long enough that I can do my stuff. My opponent has some really good top decks, though. All right. Lotus Petal is not one of them. Sick. All right. So, I guess this is just like my clear route forward, right? See what we hit. Nothing of note. Yeah, this deck feels very bad when I only have one land. Like, I, I need to deploy multiple things. Um, okay, cool. They'll kind of know everything that's going on with my opponent's hand, luckily. Multiple surgicals. Hell yeah. Um, so, I could hit a Hogak here, right? And it would be cool. All right, let's hit a Hogak. Hit a Grave Crawler, which my opponent might just bury. Back for one. Um, I cut most of my altars, right? Yeah, I cut some altars and Hogaks, so my board's a little bit worse than it otherwise might be. Bury junking a Grave Crawler and Putrid Imp. Sure, that's fine. Take your one. I won't uh I won't be surgicaling a fairy if you want to reanimate that. I I would be fine with that. I'm just throwing it out there. Alright, so that's gone. Uh opponent is not drawing well. Uh admittedly neither am I. Like I have these surgicals that are gonna keep me from losing the game. Uh yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna let that happen. Like I will I will beat that somehow. Like I have I have gas here that can do stuff. Um, land drop. Probably just play a blood guest. I don't think I attack with these, but that's not a hundred percent clear to me. Um, looting is actively good. All right, there goes Iona and Dark Ritual. So I can junk the Iona when my opponent goes to do a reanimation thing. Yep, absolutely. I have multiple surgicals, so that's fine. I don't need to fire off one of those until something targeting it is on the stack. Okay, yep, there goes one of them. All right, and opponent's just going to chill. That's fine. All right, um, land drop is a thing. I almost think I should attack in with the Stitcher Suppliers. I'm not going to, but I think it's close. All right, take your two. Go to ten, and then I'll play Gravecrawler. And I'll put this land into play, but I... Probably won't crack it for something like a Dryad Arbor. So, I don't know. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So, something I could have done is I could have surgicaled both Iona and Faithless Looting in response to that Thought Seize a turn or so ago. It wouldn't have been crazy. Alright, there is an Animate Dead and a Thought Seize in there. So, my surgical becomes worse once my opponent has multiple fatties in Graveyard. Uh, but we're not there yet. So I can attack for five and then attack for four. Putting another creature into my... Putting a Stitcher Supplier into my graveyard is kind of interesting, actually. Because then my opponent's Exhume that I know about might give me a creature that gives me lethal. Again. Yeah, I think this turn I'll crash in with everything. Yep, this is fine. This is worth five damage. 
Extra Supplier finds me a Blood Ghast. So I go Land, which returns the Blood Ghast. Meaning I do have Lethal next turn. Now it probably doesn't matter too much which of these I junk, but I think I'm going to force my opponent to crack this fetch land if they want a decent amount of red. And I can turn Verdant Catacombs into a Dryad Arbor. Uh, which honestly, maybe I should have done if I was planning to do that all out attack, but I was kind of trying to chill because, like, there's some. Yep. Um, there's some lines where I want to have the fetch land in play for blood guests. Okay, opponent did not find a second creature. All right, yeah. So, a faithless looting again. I'm not actually sure that they'll win if they put a creature into play. Right? Like, they put a creature into play. They have two blockers. Yeah, I fetch Dryad Arbor and they die. Yeah. Alright, game on the draw is harder. Um, with both Altar and Smallpox out, it was a little hard to sacrifice some of my stuff. Do I want Feed the Swarm on the draw? Maybe. Every card I board dismantles my core a little bit more. It's just harder to keep stuff out of play when I'm on the draw. I'd probably junk like two bridges and one putrid imp or something like that to get these in there. Um, I might be over sideboarded at this point though. This is a handful of reasonable cards that probably just loses to reanimator doing its thing. Um, I'll be mulliganing this hand. See what we can find. Uh, this doesn't really do anything. Yeah, without the second black source for this, I don't think this is capable. Uh, yikes. This is five already. So on five, I can keep like Thoughtseize land, waste land, and either another land or a carrion feeder. I'm stone cold dead to my opponent doing something on the play, but I can maybe, or yeah, like on turn one, but I can maybe deal with something otherwise. Um, I think this is a begrudging keep, and I don't know what my last card to go back is, because like having black black so Dalty Voidwalker is alive top deck is something that definitely matters. I think I'm just going to pitch the carrion feeder and keep no threat. Um, this doesn't always work out, but, like, the games on the draw are scary. Alright, so, let's, let's see if this is relevant. I assume my opponent is just going to entomb here, and then if they have multiple pieces of reanimation, I lose. Cast your entomb. There it is. Alright, there's a Grizzlebrand. Did you have multiple pieces of reanimation? Yes. Fuck. All right, I probably lose. Mm. I'm going to take the animate dead here. I don't think it matters too much. I think I lose in all of the worlds. Um, I'm going to take the animate dead because I want my opponent to use their life with reanimate so that they draw fewer cards. This lets them dark ritual as well. Like, if I... This is only, like, one set of card draws, though. So, like, they have to have, like, Dark Ritual, Entomb, plus Reanimation Spell in these seven that they draw. Like, well, combined with the three cards they already had, right? Um, this gives me some worlds to spike something that kills my opponent here. Or, well, not that kills my opponent, that kills the Grizzlebrand. Uh, and if I kill the Grizzlebrand, they're at four life, and some derpy top deck might be able to get me there. All right, so coast is absolutely clear. I think I have three outs to this. Still so unsure about sideboarding here. All right, uh, that's not an out. My opponent presumably gets Iona, and then I can't win. Um, I guess Wasteland has the highest chance of stopping that, but, like, you know, that's pretty sketch because my opponent can just draw seven again if they even feel like they need to. All right, well, um, let's see if we're actually, like, dead this turn. Or if we get another draw. I assume that I don't, like, does not feel like a good matchup. Opponent's deck is just faster than ours. We're looking to play against, like, slow, kind of derpy blue decks where we can just, like, dirtle and do our thing and sink 10 mana into Carrion Feet or Gravecrawler. I don't have the time to do that here. All right. Um, luckily, that has no text. <laughs> Um, you know, 
but uh, I have I have zero outs to a Iona hitting play if my opponent can put it into play via an animate dead or exhume. Okay, opponent is just discarding. Three outs. Ball therapy is not one of them. Um, at this point, I think I'm comfortable conceding. Grizzlebrand looks at another seven cards. Uh, we're we're not getting there. GG's. All right. Um, I've got a reasonable mix of lands and spells here. I think I'll keep this one. Um, there's going to be kind of the question of like, what do I do regarding this small pox? How how fast do I try to go with this hand? Um, am I just going to put this bridge from below into the graveyard as quickly as I can? I think so. Like ther therapy, like in the dark, blind like that is uh, like pretty pretty risky. Like I could just fire it off on brainstorm and hit some proportion of the time, but don't think I am there for that. Oh, this is going to be exile based removal, uh, which is going to be pretty good. Oh, but not on turn one. Thick. All right, uh, and that does shuffle. I really need more lands than kind of a common theme with this deck though a uh, hogak cool all right i'm gonna crash in for two and see if i can do a land destruction thing that just gives me a free win here all right uh and i am 100 percent good with just going for this here i think it's very strong if it works like this will warrant a force effect if my opponent has one all right uh it's resolved I'll discard my bridge. Okay. Like my opponent mulliganed once. They shuffled off that ponder. Let's see if this gets somewhere. All right. So kind of like I suspected, my opponent um, is playing a blue-white X control deck. Probably Bant with the way these have been looking recently. All right. Um, if they have a prismatic ending or source of plowshares here, they can keep me from recasting the grave crawler this turn. Ooh, but, uh, they're just going for the old ponder. That's fine. Fetchland would be cool on my end. Fetchland into Hogak. All right, no shuffle with that. Another Gravecrawler. Um, since I have another one, I guess I just cast this one from Graveyard rather than just Cabal Therapy Swords to Plowshares right away. Oh, actually, I could have cast the one from hand and then just like jammed a hogak immediately but that like jams it into swords to plowshares in a way that i'm trying to avoid i don't know maybe jamming is just fine like opponent has not prioritized removing my stuff though so i don't know like maybe they're just gonna play a stone forge oh fuck me <laughs> like <laughs> fucking rude <laughs> what a punish for not playing uh hogak last turn god damn all right um uh, so good, good two three this league. Uh, all right, for sure, sure. I, all right. So my plan now becomes mill my opponent out via the fucking card that mills people out. The altar thing, altar of dementia. There we go. Name like a Jace here, I guess. Another energy field. All right, fuck. Okay, cool. I'm not sure whether it's better life value to just concede now and move to the next game or whether I actually am supposed to play this out and try to realistically just mill my opponent out via an energy field. It's like so hard to do. I don't know. Maybe my opponent is very win condition light. Like if it's just a couple of Helm of Obedience as their only win conditions or something like that, like maybe I could do something. Yeah, so I think I just uh, continue to cast creatures. I I need to have a board as large as possible so that when I get an altar, I can actually use it to try and just... Oh, okay. So that just puts Helm of Obedience on top of my opponent's library and I lose. Okay, cool. All right. <sighs> So I need these feed the swarms. And I guess I play I don't really want discard spells. Probably just have to fucking play them though. Uh this is awful. This kind of explains some of my opponent's play patterns, by the way. Um Go Bone Shards out. Uh 
Maybe go bridge out. I I don't know. Just uh, not feeling great. Maybe we do a little bit of trimming in a couple different directions. Just go slightly lighter on some of the graveyard stuff. Uh, so what do I do? I just thought sees on turn one, smallpox on turn two, and then I'm kind of left in an awkward situation. I I think I just keep this since it has a thought sees and a feed the swarm. Um, but this doesn't look like it's going to win the game. Like, I can do a pretty good job of not losing, but I don't think I do a good job of winning, if that makes sense at all. All right, let's pick apart the beginning of this hand here. Hell yeah. Absolutely hell yeah. All right, fuck off, rest in peace. My opponent has enough lands where it might not make sense for me to just slam a smallpox as quickly as possible. All right, sure. I was going to hold up Fluster rather than Ponder. I'm fine with that. So I will cast a Putrid Imp, discard a Bloodgast, and use Verdant Catacombs to just immediately bring it back and call it a turn. All right, no end stop Brainstorm or anything. So this turn will potentially just see a Ponder followed by a Fluster. At least I have at least I have feed the swarm like immediately available available. I'm not gonna fetch out a dryad arbor here or anything. I don't want to get that card caught up in some other shenanigans. Um, so let's grab a. I, I guess I don't. No, it, no, it is a sorcery. I'm right. So I'll feed the swarm this while they don't have the fluster storm available. God damn it! Like I knew all but one card. And their two draws were force and rest in peace. Fuck me. All right. I hit in for three damage. Um, but I think this game is likely a lost cause. Like with the with the rest in peace in play, it's just so hard for me to get a lot of value. I can't get this Hogak into play. The small poxes hurt me quite a bit right now, probably as much as if not more than my opponent. So they're just like not super castable. And that was no shuffle on the ponder. Now, what whatever opponent has is just fresh. Oh, there's more. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's happening. My my clock is non-existent. All right. I swear to God, if their last card is Flusterstorm, I don't I don't know what I will do. Like I will be so upset. All right. Goodbye. All right. Good. Did not have to uninstall magic online. <laughs> okay. So, what is this, like a Teferi? Not the end of the world, if so. Um, Narset's pretty good, though. Like, that just allows my opponent to dig for a new rest in peace. Or whatever. Like, a removal spell is fine as well, as is, like, another Planeswalker. Energy field. Sure. All right. I am going to go ahead and just attack Narset here. If Narset wants to minus, I'll take that card just off the battlefield, which I'm fine with. I think I'm just supposed to play the Bloodgast here over the Smallpox. Like, I don't have a Darkmoor Salvage. I don't have anything recursive right now. The Smallpox is just so much better for me if I can wait a turn to play it. Then the Narset is just going to, like, minus immediately. Rip, energy field, land. Table flip. Uh, that's an Enlightened Tutor for a rest in peace. So that's pretty bad. A prismatic ending, sure. So my opponent just gets to... God. Uh, this is frustrating. Like my opponent just has rest in peace energy field next turn. Or if I play smallpox, it waits a turn. If I play smallpox, it waits a turn. But then I don't have two mana in order to answer it. Um... I don't think I win this game under basically any circumstances at this point, but I don't know. Opponent can mess up. All right, so I'm going to have to draw my final copy of Feed the Swarm in order to answer this other rest in peace. This feels so bad. All right. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So they play rest in peace. I lose on my graveyard once again. I have no threat. I can't cast a lot of my cards. This is a bad spot. Like, I stopped Rest in Peace plus Energy Field from happening by playing the smallpox, but 
you know, a lot of things get significantly worse once Rest in Peace is in play, and my opponent's deck top decks way better than mine does. Like, they can find an energy field, they can find a helm, they can find cantrips, planeswalkers, whatever. And they're at a high enough life total where I don't just immediately win this game by sneaking a couple of bloodgasts into play. Sure. Yeah, alright. That's fine. Like, can I even play this right now? I don't know that I can play this right now. Takes me off my ability to remove this rest in peace. Like, with my opponent already having a Teferi in place so that every few turns they can draw an extra card, I'm already kind of slipping behind. I think if I take myself off of hard casting my two drops, it's just, like, too scary of a situation for me. All right. Um, okay. So, can't you... You could have just, like, minus to draw a card, right? An up two? Sure. So, I will play a 2-1. And then I'll play this awful, awful game where my opponent effectively gains another 4 life with their Teferi while I try to just gun that thing down. Did you draw a Helm? Alright, so I have one, one out to that, I think. My final, uh, what is it, Feed the Swarm? Otherwise I'm dead. Alright, Gun Seed. Uh, obviously not going to beat the, uh, the main deck, Rest in Peace control deck with a whole bunch of white removal that exiles. Ugh. Uh, overall thoughts on the deck list. Medium. Like, I expected a 2-3 or a 3-2 going into the league, and that's what we got. Um, it This deck has some opening hands that can do absolutely insane stuff, and then it has a lot of opening hands that are just really clunky because some things like bone shards and smallpox are kind of situational in terms of their timing. Um... I don't think this deck's necessarily bad. I I would call this deck cute. Like, it is trying to very actively do some things, but, like, I don't think I ever dredged a Darkmoor Salvage in this league. I also don't think I ever had the opportunity to dredge one in this league. So, like, this ended up being just a ETB-tapped land with no other real benefit this league. Um, the Wastelands were kind of awkward in that they weren't black pips for recurring things like Gravecrawlers or casting blood gasts on curve. I understand they're supposed to stack with Smallpox for some disruption. I don't know how strong that is overall. Um, but, like, this is this was a fun league to play. Like, I didn't exactly do super well, but I enjoyed playing it. Uh, so if you are a fan of mono black decks, uh, consider messing around with this and, uh, kind of tuning it to your liking. Uh, remember, Champion of the Perished is something else you can consider including in a shell sort of like this one if you want to get away from the smallpox stuff but still do a lot of the other things that you're seeing here. Uh, anyway, consider leaving me a like on the way out. It supports my content for free and is super helpful for my analytics. Okay, have a great rest of the day, folks. See ya.